Now it's time for your questions that have come in on email. And yeah, we've got some doozies today. Yes. Esperanza writes, uh, I love my mother very much, and the Bible tells us to honor our parents. People have said we have a hard mother, quick to anger, unforgiving. She doesn't have a relationship with my daughter and has not spoken to her in eight years. When she found out my daughter graduated from college and she wasn't invited, she stopped talking to me. I've tried to talk to her, but she said to leave her alone. I'm getting married soon and would love her to be there, but she wants nothing to do with me. What should I do? You know, the Bible says for this cause, a man should leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife and the twain shall become one flesh. When you get married, you, you enter into another relationship. You still have to honor your mother and father, but uh, uh, you now have a relationship to your husband and he to you and you've started a new unit. It's a shame that your mother's that way. That's the way she was born. You didn't choose her, but she's your mother, and she will continue to be your mother. She's the one that gave you life. You, you were formed in her womb, and uh, she is on honor. But if she wants to be a pain in the neck, you don't have to just suffer continued abuse. Mm -hmm. And you should need to just say, look, mother, I honor you. I love you. I want you to be part of our family. But if you choose not to be, then I'll still love you, but I'm not going to suffer uh, your indignities because I don't have to. Okay. Yeah. All right. Seth writes in, I have recently been called into jury duty, and the forms say that you cannot be excused due to religious beliefs. I believe that only Christ can judge, as I am reminded of in Luke 6:37 and also 1 Corinthians 4, verse 5. Mm -hmm. I do not want to be judging another person, but the court system seems to force me to do contrary to my beliefs. I am not sure what to make of this. Well, look, the jury in our system essentially is a trier of fact. These are people, uh, uh, good men and true, who uh, are of the same class theoretically as you, and uh, they have been presented a set of facts. And it is their job as jurors to say the, this is true or it's false. And uh, they either say the person has done what is being accused, he's being accused of, or he's innocent of it. And all they do is declare the facts. So in a sense, you aren't judging. Uh, uh, that's not really what you do, but you're just saying, I agree with the prosecutor, or I agree with the, the uh, uh, people making the complaint, the, uh, or I agree with the defendant. And that's all you're doing. So don't make a big deal of jury duty. It's a wonderful civic responsibility. And the fact that that this isn't taken out of the hands of the people or taken in the king's person or in the uh, you know, uh, ecclesiastical courts, but it's left to the people. And the jury system is a wonderful thing, even though juries do make bad decisions. Okay. All right. Thanks, Pat. Christy writes in, I have a family member who is a Christian and believes if you do not ask for forgiveness for every sin you commit, that when you die, you will go to hell. What is your belief on this? I wonder who in the world teaches this nonsense, and that is utter nonsense. The Bible says if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ continuously cleanses us from all sin. We don't have to be asking God for forgiveness for everything we do. I mean, we would have nothing else to do in life except ask for forgiveness, because we're all a bunch of cotton-picking sinners, and we fall short of the glory of God every day. Every day. And so you say, I plead the blood. I ask for the blood of Jesus. Lord, I am a sinner. I confess to my sin. And if it's something that's, that's eating you where you know you've, you've sinned, and then confess it to the Lord. But not the fact that, uh, uh, you know, you, you didn't tip the waitress 20% instead of 10% or something. Say, oh, God, forgive me. All right, what else? Okay. Uh, Leslie writes, <laughs> sorry, Leslie writes, and why do we refer to the Bible as the Word? Why don't we just say Bible? Well, Biblia means book. Why don't we just say book? Well, we don't say book, but there are, there are three, 300, 300, I think I'm right, references in the Bible saying the word of the Lord came, the word of the Lord came, the word spoken by the prophet, the word of the Lord came to him saying the word. And Jesus Christ himself is called the word of God. So that's why we use the Word. It's a very important thing, and uh, the words are in the Biblia, but we don't just use book, book, book. We talk about the Word because it's used hundreds of times in the Bible. Yeah. 
Okay. That's right. Just read the book of John. I am the word. Jesus I'm said the I'm word. the word. So that was fantastic. Thanks for some really interesting questions.